During the course of World War II, Japanese soldiers had a reputation for never surrender. Many considered surrendering a way of courting death. It was seen as righteous by the Japanese military to sacrifice one's life for the emperor. Between surrender and death, death was more honourable. For Australia, a member of the British Commonwealth, on the outbreak of war in Europe in 1939, Australian Prime Minister Robert Menzies announced that with the UK's declaration of war, Australia too was at war. For the first few years of the war, Australia found itself more involved in a conflict on the other side of the world as the Nazis ravaged Europe, Australian men fought in North Africa, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East. In the early years of war, much emphasis was placed on the cooperation with the British, as a result, few Australian military units were stationed in the Asian Pacific region in 1940, although the Japanese Empire loomed as a threat. Australia, though, had been monitoring the rise of Japan during the 1930s, closely watching the Japanese campaigns in Manchuria and China. Australia's defence plan, though, relied heavily on the support of the British particular the British Navy in Singapore. As the war in Europe continued to progress, the British found themselves in a fight for survival. Protecting the colonies would be increasingly difficult for the Empire. Through 1941, actions were taken by the Australian government to improve defences in the region. But with so many Aussie troops committed to fighting in Europe, the Asia-Pacific region was vulnerable. December 1941, while well, Japan made its greatest moves yet, with surprise attacks on the Philippines, Malayan Peninsula, and most well known of all, Pearl Harbor. On the 8th of December 1941, Australian Prime Minister John Curtin announced that Australia was at war with Japan with these words This is the gravest hour of our history. The next year, 1942, saw the Australian military effort focus primarily on the Japanese. The fall of Singapore in February 1941, over 14,000 Australian troops were taken prisoner. Many feared an invasion by Japan itself, and on the 19th of February 1942, those fears were seeming they may become a reality with the Darwin bombing raid occurring that day. A devastating low for Australia in the war, as the country itself faced the horrors of war. The Darwin bombing lasted for 20 minutes, and in that span of time, eight ships were sunk in the bay, while another 15 were damaged, a further two merchant ships near Barfurst Island would also sink, and the loss of the lives that day is disputed. The low commission investigating the attack estimated 243 deaths, while other figures put it as high as over 1,000. However, there was to be one small victory that day, with Australia's first prisoner of war against Japan caught on the same day as the attack. A damaged Japanese pilot, Hajin Tutoshima, was returning from attack on the aerodrome on Barfurst Island. The plane had been damaged during the raid. Losing oil pressure, the plane crashed near Snake Bay on Melville Island, north of Darwin. Tiwi man Matthias Ulangara was the one who would capture Toyoshima. Matthias Ulangara was part of a hunting party nearby. He identified the crashed airplane and only wearing a loincloth, he would sneak up from behind on Toyoshima and jab the pilot in the back with the handle of his tomahawks, pretending it was a barrel of a gun. As Matthias himself would later say, I walked up to him and grabbed his wrist near his gun. He got a proper big fright. I'd take a revolver from his right side near his knee, then I walked backwards pointing the gun. I say, stick him up, two hands, no more holding hands on head. Having taken Toyoshima into custody, Matthias Ulangara would walk the prisoner down to Barfurst Island Aerodrome and handed Toyoshima into custody. Initially using the alias of Tado Manami, he claimed he had been washed ashore in an attempt to prevent his captors from locating his downed plane. After questioning, police saw through his story and located the wreckage. Toyoshima was to be sent to the Australian prisoner of war camp. Through the course of a war, the top end of Australia was attacked by the Japanese more than 60 times. With a loss of thousands of people, as for Hajime Toyoshima, well, he would never leave Australia. On the 4th of August 1944, Toyoshima was involved in a breakout from a cholera prisoner of war camp, and well, he died during it. For Matthias Ongara, not much else is known about his life. He lived till 1980 and had a family. 
1985, he was posthumously honoured with a memorial. With a dedication to the memorial, which took the form of a Khan, was attended by Chief Minister Ian Tuxworth and Opposition Leader Bob Collins. He would be further honoured in 2016 with a lifestyle statue on Bathurst Island. Matthias remains relatively unknown within Australia, and yet he played a significant role in Australian history during one of its darkest days. In February 19th, Singapore had just fallen. Japan had bombed Darwin, and panic had set in. Looting and disorder was rife, and half the city fled south, which became known as the Adelaide River States. Hundreds of Australian servicemen had abandoned their post, and even three days later, 278 servicemen were still missing. But on that day, Matthias would calmly approach a down Japanese soldier and took him into custody. He gave Australia a small but needed victory on that day, when many thought the world was ending, and yet his contribution is unknown to most. Thank you guys, and if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more.